In this video we're going to be taking a look on pages Excel 56 and 57 in which we're going to be changing font styles and alignment. Now font styles are formats such as bold, italic, and underlining that you can apply to affect the way text and numbers look in a worksheet. You can also change the alignment of labels and values in the cells to position them in relation to the cell's edges, such as left aligned, right aligned, or centered, very similar to in Word. Now you can apply font styles and alignment options using the Home tab. Now of course we go to the Home tab, there's our alignments group right here and that's where we're going to be doing most of that at. Uh, of course we can also use the Format Cells dialog box or the mini toolbar. Now you can always take a look on page uh, Excel 57 on table C2 for a description of common font styles and alignment buttons that are available on the home tab and on the mini toolbar and we'll go over those here briefly in just a moment. Now once you have formatted a cell uh, the way you want it you can paint or copy the cells formats to other cells by using the format painter button in the clipboard group on the home tab. This is similar to using copy and paste, but instead of copying cell contents, it copies only the cell's formatting. And of course, just a brief rundown of some of these uh, font styles and alignments uh, that's on there. Of course, here we have the B, and that will bold the text. The I, that is to italicize the text. The U, that's to underline the text. Uh, this is a very important button that's right here, and uh, this button is the Merge and Center button. Of course, it does have a drop-down button as well, where we can see that we can merge and center, merge across, merge cells, or we can unmerge cells as well. Uh, of course, we also do have the Left Align, Center, and we also have the Right Align as well. Now, there's also uh, another button that's on here. It's called the Wrap Text button. And of course, this allows you to wrap text, longer text, into multiple lines on a uh, cell. Well, the first thing that we want to do is let's take a look at step one uh, on page Excel 56. And it tells us that we want to press our control and home, and that's going to send us back to cell A1. Then it tells us that we want to click on the bold button in the font group on the home tab. And of course, once we do that, the title in cell A1 appears in bold. Next, in step 2, it tells us that we want to select cell A3. Then it tells us that we want to click on the U here, the underline button, in the font group. And it tells us that the column label is now underlined, uh, though this may be difficult to see with the cell selected, so you may have to deselect the cell to see this, but you can see there is a line that's underneath the word type. A quick tip on there is that you can use the following keyboard shortcuts to format uh, the selected cells or ranges as well. If you hit the control and your B key, that is going to bold your text. The control plus I key italicizes your text, and the control and U key together underlines the text. Next, in step 3, it tells us that we want to click on the italics button. So you can actually add more than one style uh, to a um, individual cell or a range of cells. And then of course finally it tells us that we want to bold this as well. So now the heading that we see here for the word type uh, appears in bold faced, it's underlined, and it's now in italic type. Of course notice that the bold, italic, and underlined buttons in the font group are all selected so they're all kind of highlighted on here as well. Step 4 tells us that we want to select the italic button to deselect it. So we're going to click on that to deselect it. Now the italic font style is removed from cell A3, but the bold and underlined font styles still remain. Now a quick tip on there is, is that the overuse of any font style and random formatting can actually make a workbook difficult to read. Just remember to be consistent and add the same formatting to similar items throughout a worksheet or in related worksheets. Now step 5 tells us that we want to go through there and we want to click on this format painter button in the clipboard group. And of course once again uh, up in our opening paragraph it told us that this is like copying paste except for we're copying the bold and underline of this um, formatting of this cell. 
Once we click on that, it tells us that we want to select the range B3 to J3. So I'm going to click on B3 to J3. And of course, notice that when I do that, the formatting in cell A3 is copied to the rest of the column labels. Now to paint the formats on more than one selection, you need to double click the format painter to keep it activated until you turn it off. Now you can turn off the format painter by pressing escape or just by clicking the format painter button. Now you decide that the title would look better if it were centered over the data columns because right now we kind of see it's a little bit off centered uh, so we want to make this uh, title centered. And to do this we need to go to step six. And step six on here uh, tells us that we want to select cell range A1 to H1. So we're going to select this group of cells right here and then we're going to click on the merge and center button in the alignments group. Now not the little down pointing arrow, we just want the actual button here. And of course when we do that the merge and center button creates one cell out of the eight cells across the row and then centers the text in that newly created merge cell. So ultimately we took eight cells and we turned them into one big cell. The title Quest Specialty Travel Advertising Expenses is centered across the eight columns that you selected. Now of course to split a merge cell into its original components you have to select the merge cell which is now one big cell so if you clicked anywhere else inside of this cell you notice that it selects all of it all together. Uh, on there and then you have to click on the merge and center button to deselect it. Now of course the merge and center text might look awkward now but we'll be making some changes to the column with shortly and that's going to make it look better. And of course occasionally you may find that you want cell con contents to wrap within the cell. And of course that's when you use the wrap text button that's on there. And of course this is a nice new button that they put in for um, Excel 2013. Uh, used to you had to go into the format cells dialog box and actually click a little checkbox uh, that actually a little bit allow you to wrap the text. Now we don't want to wrap the text of this uh, title right now uh, because we're going to make some changes here in just a little bit to make this look better because right now it looks cut off. It's not you don't see all of it but when we make some changes to these uh, row or these column lists we'll be able to see all the uh, formatting on there. Next, on step 7, it tells us that we want to select the range A3 to J3. So we're going to select this cell range right here. And it tells us that we want to right click. And of course that's going to bring up our mini toolbar. And the only alignment option that we have on the mini toolbar right now is the center button. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to center uh, the headings across the rows. Or excuse me, the columns. Now, of course, go ahead and compare uh, your screen with what you see here. Although it may be difficult to read, notice that all the headings are centered within their cells. Just like Word would center it between the left and right margins, uh, Excel is centered the text in between uh, the left and right edges of the cell. Now, of course, a quick tip for you is, is that if you ever wanted to clear all formatting from a selected range, you can click on the clear button which is right up here in the editing group uh, on the home tab and you can click all the formats. Now if we take a look on page Excel 57 we can take a look at rotating and indenting cell entries. Now of course in addition to applying fonts and font styles you can rotate or indent data within, cell, within a cell to further change its appearance. Now you can rotate text with a, within a cell by altering its alignment. And of course to change the alignment you must first select the cell that you want to modify. And of course let's say for an example we want to modify maybe this first cell right here. Uh, we're not going to make any changes to it but we'll just show you for an example here. And it tells you that you want to click on the launcher button in the alignment group. And of course notice that this brings up the format cells uh, dialog box that's on there. And of course you can change here the orientation on there and of course that will change the alignment on this. Uh, or you can also type in the number of degrees that you want it. So if we wanted to align this up a little bit and I'll make this change and then make it back. Let's say that we want this to be uh, at a 45 degree angle. If I click on OK here of course notice that 
the information has now been angled there on there so that may be a way that you can get some additional information in on your cells and of course that takes it from its default horizontal orientation uh, of course to uh, get that back you can just go through there click on your alignment tab and you can click on zero degrees uh, to get it back to where it belongs uh, on there as well now of course if you're wanting to add some indentions on there as well we do have uh, the increase indent and the decrease indent uh, buttons that's on here. There's the decrease indent, there's the increase indent button that's on there. And you can click on those to move the cell contents. Uh, if you click on the increase indent button, it moves the cell contents to the right one space. And if you click on the decrease indent button, it moves the contents to the, uh, to the left one space uh, within the cell. And that concludes the information that's on pages Excel 56 and 57. In the next video, we're going to be talking about adjusting the column width. So make sure that you do save your document and you're ready to move on to the next video.